it is borderline humiliating when you figure out a new tool in Illustrator and realize you have been wasting hours of time. That's how I felt when I figured out these five tools and now I cannot live without them. They save me so much time when I'm designing surface pattern designs or textile designs. So if you're interested in that kind of work, then stick around and I'll show you my favorite tools that I absolutely could not live without now. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my favorite tools in Illustrator that I absolutely cannot live without. Right now I just have my tiger motif and I'm going to make him into a pattern. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this guy and next I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools that I use all the time and that is the reflect tool. If you go to object, transform, reflect, that just reflects our tiger on a vertical angle. You can also choose horizontal, but, or really any angle, but I'm just going for the vertical angle because I want to connect their tails together like this. I think that's gonna be really cute. I feel like his feet are a little bit off, so I'm just going to rotate him a little bit. And that's looking better. So I'm gonna delete that guy, copy and paste, and use the reflect tool one more time. You can also click this preview button to see how your reflection's gonna look. And I'm just gonna come back and connect their tails like so. The reason why I love the reflect tool is because it gives you almost a second motif. It looks totally different when you reflect it, especially if it's a flower or anything like that. And for the purpose of this pattern, this just works really well. There's no need for me to draw a second tiger when I can just reflect the first one. From there, I just wanna make sure my tigers are totally lined up, so I'm gonna click over both of them and come to my align tool, which I use constantly when I'm creating patterns in Illustrator, and I'm just gonna click on the bottom to make sure their feet are lining up. I think they are already pretty close. We didn't see it move too much, so that's just a good indicator. From there, I'm gonna to go to object group, and now my tigers are grouped together. From there, I'm just going to go ahead and drag my tigers to the corner because I wanna make sure anything that's overlapping on the top and sides is gonna be repeating on the other side. So I'm just gonna click on copy and paste, actually paste in place. So that's also shift command V on a Mac. And then I'm gonna to go to another one of my absolutely favorite tools, which is the move tool. From there, you're gonna to have to type in a little bit. I don't know why it gives you kind of some random measurements here, but we're going to type in 12, which is the same size as our artboard here. And for vertical, we're just gonna click on zero because we don't want it to move up and down at all. So then we're just gonna click okay. So now we know that these tigers are reflecting perfectly. And if I hover over both of them, I can drag these really anywhere on the artboard and I know that it's gonna be reflecting. So because there isn't really enough space for me to put two more tigers here, what I'm gonna do is just scale down by holding shift and scaling down a bit like that. Okay, so now I'm going to, let's see, I want my tigers to be kind of facing each other like this as well. And so I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna do copy, shift, command V to paste in place and go back to my move tool. Go to 12 and zero for vertical. Okay, so that's getting me a lot closer to where I wanna be, but it's still not quite, these guys' faces are overlapping, so I'm gonna just try one more time, shrink it just a little bit more. And now we can see we have enough space between these two tigers' faces. So the way I can make sure that everything is lining up perfectly and making sure I get the same amount of space between these tigers and these tigers is I'm gonna drag over all of them. I'm going to click the center align tool here. And then I'm gonna click distribute, horizontal distribute center here. And that makes sure that my tigers are lined up perfectly. From there, I'm gonna group these tigers. And I'm going to, again, hit copy, shift command V to paste in place. And now I'm going to move these tigers down to the bottom of the artboard. So instead of horizontally, I'm gonna click zero for horizontal, and 12 for vertical. And that copies my whole row of tigers down here. And now I know that anything that's overlapping at the top is also lining up and overlapping at the bottom 
Okay, so that's good because then I can also copy and paste and because I know these are in repeat, anything that's getting cut off on this side is repeating over here. Okay, so from there, I'm just gonna line up my tigers a bit more. I think I want the one going this way to be on top of one going the opposite way and for their tails to kind of line up here where the faces are. So I can just copy and paste these tigers over and over again and fill up the pattern. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna drag over all of my tigers and just click on vertical distribute center. And that has distributed my tigers perfectly. I do wanna make sure that this bottom row didn't get moved at all. I don't think it did, but I'm just gonna delete it and do my top row one more time. Copy, paste in place, shift command V and move down to the bottom. Zero for horizontal and 12 for vertical. Now I know that that's an exact repeat. So I really love this align tool. It's how I get my motifs evenly spread across my artboard and you know evenly spaced and distributed throughout. From there, I want to clip my tigers into the artboard so I can really see what the pattern is looking like. And so I'm going to just click on this background square shape that's filling up my artboard. And I just like to click on the layer here to make sure I'm only clicking that. I'm gonna click on copy. And then I'm gonna go back up to my top layer and I'm going to click Shift Command V to paste in place. Then I'm going to lock this layer back because I actually don't want it to be a part of my clipping mask, but I'm going to then click here on this layer to select everything. From there, you can click Command 7 or go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And our pattern gets clipped into our artboard so we can really see what the repeat pattern is looking like. Sometimes clipping masks can get a little bit funny to work with. And so what I like to do from there is to use the Pathfinder tool to really compress everything here. And it really just cuts off everything that was extra. And so from there, I can go to my Pathfinder tool and click on Merge. And now my pattern is totally clipped in. There's no extra space and we've gotten rid of the clipping mask. So this is just a very simple thing for Illustrator to read. It doesn't get funky and it does, if I double click on it, you know, it's still just all one piece. So I find that I'm constantly using the Pathfinder tool just to make things a lot more simple when I am working in Illustrator and just to compress things and you know kind of make it all one layer. So from there, I'm just adding some texture into my ground. I'm just gonna change the color and that's looking nice. So one of my all time favorite tools to use when creating patterns in Illustrator is the Magic Wand tool. I can't believe I didn't know about this for so long. I think it's because the tolerance for some reason is default set to 32, which makes it difficult to select the exact color that you want. But if you go in and change the tolerance to one and click enter, then it will choose only one color. You can click just Y on your keyboard and we can get some different colors here. So if I wanna change the color of these black stripes, I can just go in with my magic wand, click on the black, and it's gonna select everything in the pattern that's that same color, and I can change it to just like this darker brown color. So that is looking really cute. I'm really happy with this pattern. It's also nice to be able to use magic wand tool to create different colorways. So I'm gonna make sure all my layers are unlocked and come over to my palette here, and I'm gonna create some other colorways. I think it would be especially fun to change the background color, so I'm gonna click on this dark brown color and change that to a blue, and then change to a little bit of a brighter blue. And you can just click different colors on your artboard and kind of see how that's looking. So that's looking quite cute. I think the white is probably a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna change that to more of a cream and that is looking really cute. So my friend Jen, who also has a YouTube channel, made a video doing all the same tips and tricks, but in Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is another vector program, a lot like Illustrator, it is more basic, but you only have to pay a one-time fee, which is amazing. So if you wanna download it on your iPad, it's about $18 at this time, so <laughs> it could increase in the future. If you wanna buy it for your computer, you can pay a one-time fee of, I think 60, no, $70. And if you wanna bundle Affinity Designer with Affinity Photo, which is like Photoshop, it's only, I think, $165. 
so it could increase in the future so i would recommend getting it sooner rather than later i think i only paid about 20 bucks for each of the programs back in the day um so that was a few years ago so yeah get it now before the price increases <laughs> but yeah you can see all the same tips and tricks over on jen's youtube video so go watch her video and then you can choose if you prefer to go with the adobe subscription model or if you would rather just pay a one-time fee and use affinity these tools I absolutely could not live without. I hope they save you just as many hours as they've saved me and help to make your surface pattern design process a lot more seamless. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. All right, bye guys.